How do you do a full text search on the data in your DynamoDB database? The simple answer is you don't. DynamoDB excels at fast key value and document queries, but isn't built for full text search like ranking or relevance filtering. Attempting this on DynamoDB leads to performance issues and also causes additional development work. This is where Amazon OpenSearch excels. It is optimized for full text search and analytics, relevance filtering, ranking, etc. In this video, let's learn how to set up the DynamoDB's zero ETL integration with Amazon OpenSearch. This allows you to get your data in your DynamoDB database seamlessly into your Amazon OpenSearch, making it available for full text search and similar capabilities. Hello everyone, my name is Rahul and welcome back to this YouTube channel. If you're new here, I make videos on .NET, Cloud and DevOps. This video is sponsored by AWS and is part of my DynamoDB series. The DynamoDB Zero ETL integration with Amazon OpenSearch service offers a fully managed, no-code experience for ingesting data into Amazon OpenSearch. Now here's a quick overview on how this plugin works. The plugin uses DynamoDB export to Amazon S3 to create an initial snapshot to load the data into OpenSearch. This is if you have existing data in your DynamoDB table. Now after the snapshot has been loaded, the plugin uses DynamoDB streams to replicate any further changes. So DynamoDB streams is a feature where you can get change notifications on the updates, creates and deletes on the data in your DynamoDB table. Now I have covered a video on streams which will be linked here and in the descriptions below. Now for this ETL to work, we need to make sure that point in time recovery is enabled to use the export to Amazon S3 and we also need to make sure DynamoDB streams are enabled. Now, since the plugin is based on DynamoDB streams, the plugin does not use the read or write throughput on your table. So it's safe to use without impacting your production traffic. Open search ingestion also supports a dead letter queue, which helps us to capture any errors that might occur when trying to migrate the data from DynamoDB into open search. So let's see how we can set up this integration and see the data coming into open search. Now in this video, I'll just be covering on the integration setup and will not be going into detail on open search or how to integrate with your applications. Now to start setting up this integration, let's navigate onto my DynamoDB dashboard where I have a table. So let's work on the event table, which is active. Right now, I don't have any records inside this table. We can add an item so that we can also see the initial data migration in action. So let's come here and create a new item. Let's give this an ID. So let's give this as one. Let's also give this a string attribute and call this as name. And let's say my pre-migration setup item. Now, this would be your DynamoDB table where you want to implement full text search. Now, you might have multiple fields, multiple properties, and different amounts of data inside your database. This is purely for demonstration purposes. So now to enable this, like we said, we first need to enable point in time recovery and also DynamoDB streams. So let's navigate into the view table details, go into the backups, and here we can enable point in time recovery. So let's click edit and turn this on and click save changes. Let's also make sure to enable streams. So let's go into the exports and streams and turn on the DynamoDB stream. So let's click turn on and say new and old images and click turn on stream. Now with the prerequisites out of the way, let's navigate into the integrations tab, which is a new tab where you can set up the integration. Now here you can see I have a couple of test integrations that I've already set up. So let's create a new one. So let's click create new integration and choose Amazon Open Search. Now this regards the new pipeline creation, which needs some configuration. So let's give the name first. So let's specify event data pipeline. Now let's leave these as the default settings and let's scroll down to the pipeline configuration. Now we need to specify this configuration when you want to create the pipeline. So let's first copy this and let's paste this into Visual Studio Code so that it's easier to work with this file. So let's create a new file and paste this inside here. Now this configuration has two parts. So it sets up the DynamoDB pipeline and it sets up a source for that pipeline and also the sync. 
So these are the two parts that we need to set up for this integration. The source in this case is going to be the DynamoDB table and the sync is going to be the open search. So let's start providing the configuration that's required for this. So we start off by providing the table ARN for this table that we need to specify. So let's navigate back into our DynamoDB table. Let's go to the tables, navigate to the E table that we are interested in and copy the table ARN. And let's make sure to paste that in here. Now it sets the stream position to the latest. It requires an S3 bucket. This is for the initial export that will be looking at the existing data and using point in time recovery to export it to S3. So it'll first export it to S3 and from there it'll ingest that data into Amazon OpenSearch. So let's give in a bucket name. So if I navigate back into my AWS console, I already have a bucket. So let's use the event data ingestion bucket, which does not have any items inside this. So let's make sure to copy this bucket name and let's paste it inside here where it requires the bucket name. It also requires the region for the bucket. All my resources are in AP Southeast 2. So let's make sure to copy that region and use it wherever it's required. Now this also requires an S3 prefix, which is optional and you can set it if you want to put the data inside a prefix or inside a hierarchy in S3. So let's leave this as the default string in here. Now we need to specify a role ARN that this particular sync can use to get the data from DynamoDB. Now this requires a couple of different role permissions. So let's first go and create this role. So let's navigate back into our AWS console. Let's open up a new tab. So let's go into the AWS console and let's navigate to IAM and let's create a new role. So let's click the create new role inside here under the roles and say create role. So let's choose a use case. In this case, the open search ingestion pipelines. So let's choose that and let's click next. Now we will be manually setting up the policies that's required for the independent tables and S3 buckets. So let's skip over this permission policies and click next. And let's click create role. Now this is going to create an empty role once we specify the name. So let's specify the event pipeline ETL role. And let's click create role. Now this is going to create the role where we can add the policy. So let's navigate into the newly created role and create permissions inside this. So we'll create an inline policy and create the policy inside this. Now you can either use the visual editor or you can also use the JSON format. Now this does require a couple of different permissions. So let's open the documentation that talks about this. And this is the list of roles that it expects us to set up. So we need to make sure we set up the describe table, the describe continuous backups and export table on the DynamoDB table. We also need to specify the describe export on the export property of the table and also allow to read the stream on the table. We also need access to write to the S3. So let's copy this role policy and let's use this and overwrite it based on our resources. So let's navigate back into the role and paste this inside here and let's start modifying this. Now in this case, we need to first specify the ARN table, which we already have in our clipboard. So let me use Windows V and let's paste in the ARN. Now we need to also specify it on the export. So this is the same ARN. So let's paste the table ARN again. And again for the stream, let's paste in the table ARN. Now we need the S3 bucket. So we have the X3 bucket name. So let's replace the my bucket with the bucket name that we have. In this case, we will be using event data ingestion. Now let's give it access to write to the entire bucket. So let's remove this prefix path and let's give slash star, which means it has access to all the objects inside that bucket. Now, once that is specified, let's click next and save this policy. So let's give this a name. So this is going to be the event data pipeline source policy. And let's click create policy. Now this is going to create a new policy and attach it inside this role. Now with the source policy specified, let's copy this ARN for this specific role. And let's switch back to Visual Studio Code and paste in this role name. So let's specify the role ARN inside here. Now this again requires the region. So let's specify the region as Southeast 2. Now we have completed the source configuration. Let's move on to the sync configuration. This requires the host domain for our open search. So let's navigate into our Amazon open search where I have a domain already created. So let's navigate into this and let's copy the domain endpoint URL and let's specify this inside the host. So let's change this and put in our URL in here. Now this also requires an index name. So in this case, let's call this as event data index. The index type is custom. 
the document ID is using the primary key of the object from DynamoDB and it's also getting the metadata action from the open search action. So this will be able to know what kind of an update it's happening on this specific item. Now let's also leave all of these as defaults and let's move on to the AWS configuration where we need to again specify the role ARN. Now we need to make sure that the role ARN with the access to the domain, it should be able to write the data into the domain. So let's make sure to modify the same role and provide the required permissions. Now for the sync, again, as from the documentation, we'll need to provide these specific policies. So let's copy this and let's come back to our IAM role and let's create a new inline policy and let's choose JSON and let's paste this in here and let's modify this. Now in this case, it needs access to describe the domain on my account ID. So let's make sure to go and get the account ID from the open search. So let's copy this ARN and we will use the account ID from here. So let's come back. We also need the entire domain URL. So let's specify the domain URL from here and let's paste this inside this. And let's also make sure to copy until our account ID and use this in the statement above. So let's copy all of this and let's change this text inside here and making sure we have the full access to do a domain search in our domain. With those two properties, let's make sure to click next and let's specify event data pipeline and in this case this is the sync policy and let's click create policy now we have both of these policies on this ARN so let's copy this ARN switch back to Visual Studio Code and let's change the ARN for this sync so let's name this as ARN that we just copied now this also says that this role should have a trust relationship with osus pipelines dot amazon aws dot com so if i switch back into our role and go into the trust relationship you can see that this is already set up on here this is because we had set up the use case as the ingestion pipeline. Now, once that is set up, let's make sure to specify the correct region. So let's change this to AP Southeast 2. So let's also specify that. And let's leave the rest as the default. Now we can specify a dead letter queue, which is an S3 bucket. So if we want, we can specify the same S3 bucket that we used earlier. So we can specify the event data ingestion which is the bucket that we used in here for the import as well. Now, in this case, also you can specify an additional key path prefix. So let's add this property and let's specify DynamoDB pipeline slash DLQ. Now we again need to specify the region, which is going to be AP Southeast 2. Now the STS role ARN is going to be exactly the same. So let's make sure to change this and specify the ARN for this role. Now that we have completely specified all the configs that's required, let's copy this and navigate back into our AWS console where we were creating the pipeline. Let's make sure to paste this in here. Now you can click the validate pipeline that will validate this pipeline. So let's make sure that the name is there and let's leave the network as public access. You can restrict this to VPC access so that it runs within a VPC. For now, I'm leaving it as public. There's also a log set up for this, which is going to create a new log group. So once all of this is given, let's click next, which is going to create this pipeline. So let's hit the create pipeline, which does take some time to get created. Now, the last step inside this is to map the pipeline role in Amazon OpenSearch so that it has relevant access to write into OpenSearch. Now, to do that, let's go to the OpenSearch and let's navigate to the dashboard for that. So let's navigate in here. So this will have a username and password that you would have set up when you had created OpenSearch. So let me specify that in here. So I have the username as OpenSearch and my password for this. Now, once inside the OpenSearch dashboard, you can navigate into the security settings. So navigate there. Let's go into the roles. And in the roles, we can give all access. So in the all access, this is going to give all access for this OpenSearch. Now you can restrict this based on the requirements that you have for this specific sync. For now, I'm just giving all access. And under the mapped users, we can add in a new mapping for the new IAM role. So let's specify add another backend role and paste in the IAM role. So in this case, this is the event pipeline ETL role. Now, once that's created, let's click map, which is going to give that specific role all access into this open search. So let's navigate back to our pipeline creation, which is still under creation. So let's wait for this to be active. Now, if you want to see any of the logs that's happening during this creation phase, you can navigate into the CloudWatch log and see what is happening. 
Once the pipeline is created and it starts writing the logs, you will be able to see log streams inside this specific log group. So you can see inside this data pipeline, it's still in step two. So it's a validation is complete. Then it needs to create the environment, deploy the pipeline, and then enable the traffic. The pipeline creation is complete and it is active. So if I switch into the CloudWatch, you can see there are log streams in here. So if I navigate into this, you can see the information on the log sync. So if there are any errors during the sync that will come up in this log stream. So now that our pipeline is set up, let's navigate into the open search dashboard and let's navigate under indexes in index management and let's navigate to indexes. So here you can see the different index. So you can see that the new event data index is now set up. So we can start querying this index from within the open search dashboard. So let's navigate to the dev management, which is the dev tools and let's search this specific index. So let's change this index from the event test index to be the event data index that we created for this specific integration. So if you navigate into the pipeline, you can see we had specified the index name in the sync operation. We specified event data index. So let's navigate back. So with the event data index, let's use the search and let's run this query. Now, in this case, you can see here, we have the data my pre-migration setup item. So let's navigate back into our items and let's add a new item. So let's click create new item. Let's specify the ID as two and let's specify a string and specify the name as new item. Let's make sure this is capital N and let's create the new item. So we have a new item inside this. So if I switch back into the dev tools and after some time, this item will also be synced. So you can see here, we have the new item in here. Now this has the ID too. So as we add items or remove items that will be updated inside this specific open search using the ETL integration that we have set up. So let's go and create one more item. Let's specify the value as two and let's specify the string and name and let's specify recently added item and let's say create item. So this ID should be unique. So let's specify three and let's click create. Now, if I navigate back into the open search and run this query, you can see we have all the items inside this. Now, updates and deletes are also going to come. So if I modify this specific item, so let's say recently added item updated and click save, that's also going to reflect inside our data. So you can see here, the recently added item updated is now reflecting in this. Now, if you want to perform additional queries, you can do that. So there are different query formats in Amazon OpenSearch. So this is one such format I'm using. So let's query for the word updated in this case, and let's run this query. And this is going to return one of those items. Now, instead of updated, if you search for the word event, that's going to show all the items with the word event. So here we can see there are two data with the name event. Now open search supports various querying capabilities that you can use to do full text search, ranking and relevance searching, etc. If you're new to that, let me know in the comments below and I'll do a separate video on how to use those features. Now with this integration, we have set up a one-to-one -one mapping from the DynamoDB table item into the open search. However, when creating the pipeline, you can provide additional properties to map the data into different properties. Now, if you want to learn more about how to customize this specific configuration to map and change the format of the data, let me know in the comments below. Now with this ETL pipeline, we were able to set up an end-to-end -end pipeline to get the data from our Amazon DynamoDB into open search. This makes it extremely easy to search through this data when you have to support full text searching and rich searching experience in your application. Using a service like Amazon Open Search makes this extremely easy. I will be doing a future video using .NET to show how to integrate this open search into the searching capabilities of the application. If you want to be notified when that video comes out, make sure to hit the subscribe button. If you like this video, please also make sure to hit the like button. It helps me to grow this YouTube channel. Thank you and see you soon in the next video.